Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Crew Con Keith here and today we are looking at the top 10 Dreamcast games. Let's take a look. So the Dreamcast, Sega's last ever console was released in 1998 in Japan and 99 in Europe and the US. Um, it's an amazing console and for years and it, I, I, I always say it's my favorite console of all time but I know I don't play a lot of games on it but um, it just holds a special place in my heart or something like that. It's such a great console, there's so many unique original games and I still say it's a better console than the PlayStation 2. But clearly, PlayStation 2 came out and destroyed, wiped the floor to Dreamcast, and the rest is history. But we're not talking about the console itself today, we're talking about the amazing games that came out on it. So I've made a top 10, my personal top 10, and let's get into it. So starting things off at number 10, we've got Metropolis Street Racer. MSR was an amazing looking game. When people started loading the demo on their Dreamcast, they knew this was something special. It was like nothing seen before in home consoles. That was all about the change, as MSR's release date was November 2000, the same as the European release date for PlayStation 2. Anyway, the game recreated London, Tokyo and San Francisco in amazing detail. The driving engine itself leaned towards the arcade style and used what was called the Kudos system that rewarded you for stylish driving. The game developers, Bizarre Creations, went on to create spiritual successors in the form of Project Gotham Racing on Xbox 360 and later the Blur series of racers. At number 9, Sega Bass Fishing. From the moment you switch this game on, it's clear to see and hear that Sega Bass Fishing has its roots in the arcade. It was released in Japanese arcades in 1997 before being ported to the Dreamcast in 1999. It is loud and colourful and lots of fun. I do find it bizarre to think a fishing game is in my top 10, but it really is that good. When you play this with the Sega Fishing controller, it gets even better. The controller had its issues and could never compete with the responsiveness of the Wii Motes and later controllers on Xbox One and PS4, but back then it was brilliant. Gameplay is exactly what it says on the team, catch fish. <laughs> you can play in arcade mode or consumer mode, which gave different challenges. A great fun addition to any Dreamcast collection. At number 8, Crazy Taxi 1 and 2. Yet another loud and colourful game that originated in the arcades. Crazy Taxi is an over the top score attack game where you drive around looking for fares and attempt to get them to their destination in the fastest possible time. It featured an American punk rock soundtrack from bands like The Offspring and Bad Religion which really added to the speed and chaos of the gameplay. Crazy Taxi 2 added a few new gameplay mechanics but was essentially more of the same. After the success on the Dreamcast, this was eventually ported to all popular consoles in some form. The latest iteration to carry the name is Crazy Taxi Tycoon on mobile devices, a taxi management game which is nothing like the Dreamcast masterpiece you're looking at right now. At your service! Thanks! Take me to Pizza Hut! Here, party time! At number 7, Jet Set Radio. One of the first cell shaded games I've ever seen, Jet Set Radio or Jet Grind Radio in the US, was a skating graffiti game, as strange as that sounds. You skate around Tokyo 2, a futuristic version of Tokyo, spraying graffiti tags to rebel against police or rival gangs. The skating part was pretty detailed, not quite Tony Hawk series, but pretty close. 
You could pull off jumps and tricks to get speed boosts or reach hard to reach areas. A strange but totally entertaining game with some revolutionary graphics. Check it out if you haven't already. And number six, Toy Commander. Toy Commander is such a fun and colourful game and remains a Dreamcast exclusive despite plans to bring it to Windows in 2001. You play as Andy, the Toy Commander, and lead your new army toys against your old toys that have rebelled against you. You control the toys around different parts of the house. It always reminded me of an open world micro machines but with less emphasis on racing and more on destruction. Also, the game has a different feel to a lot of Dreamcast games. The French development company, no cliche, really put their own mark on this. A unique game for a unique console. Ty Commander is my number six. At number 5, Rez. Rez is a really stylish musical rail shooter that came out late in the Dreamcast's short lifespan. It was released on both Dreamcast and PlayStation 2. The game takes place inside a computer called Project K, controlled by an AI called Eden. You are a virus and Eden is trying to kill you. As you progress through the game and kill enemies, the world changes from wireframe to fully shaded and the music gains more and more layers. I find it more of a chill out type of experience than a game, but having said that, it can get quite challenging and some boss fights are an absolute nightmare. And number four, Quake 3 Arena. Back in the year 2000, PC to console ports were pretty much guaranteed to be a flop as the technological gulf between the two formats were vast. Quake 3 on Dreamcast broke this mold and lost very little in translation. And in a real force, it was possible for Dreamcast gamers to go head to head against PC gamers. Dreamcast owners really thought they owned the future of gaming when they went playing this game. How that would prove untrue in the space of 12 months. Oh well, the game was brilliant and although the Dreamcast controller was a bit shitty for a first person shooter uh, with only one analog controller, it performed pretty good considering. Quake 3 was a high point for the Dreamcast and showed just how good the console was. At number 3, Skies of Arcadia. You know, some people say this is better than Final Fantasy, but I'm definitely not getting into that. A Dreamcast exclusive until its release, uh, its eventual release on the GameCube, Skies of Arcadia is a huge, classy and colourful turn-based role-playing game that takes place on huge airships or on foot when you're docked. One of the best reviewed games on the Dreamcast, this game is right up there with the best in the Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest series and a unique gem on the Dreamcast. At number 2, Resident Evil Code Veronica. The first Resident Evil game to debut outside a PlayStation platform, Code Veronica was the first in the series to push the franchise to the next generation. 
The core gameplay remained mostly unchanged, sticking with fixed cameras but in fully 3D environments. It also featured a cool, unlockable first person shooter minigame. You control Bo Claire and Chris Radfield as they once again go up against the Umbrella Corporation three months after escaping from Raccoon City. Again, another release that had Dreamcast owners thinking they were in possession of a gaming console that was going to be around for a very long time. And my number one all-time best Dreamcast game is... You know, you've probably guessed it. Uh, a lot of people have this at their number one, but what can I do? It is that good. It's Shenmue. Yeah, so as I said, a lot of you were probably expecting this. And what can I say? It truly does belong at the number one spot. I also know the game has a lot of haters who criticize the pace and gameplay. I totally get that, but for me, there could be no other game at the yeah, top spot. I remember the Dreamcast was dying when I first seen gameplay footage on video game shows on TV and thinking how incredible it looked. At the time of Shenmue's release, it was the most expensive video game ever developed. Produced and directed by the legendary Yu Suzuki, Shenmue offered an open world the likes of which had never been seen before. You played as Ryo Hazuki in a quest for revenge after your dad is killed by a bad guy named Lan Di. Your adventure takes you across amazing Japanese locations, fully realized and interactive. I loved walking the streets around Christmas with snow falling or going to an arcade and playing the entire Space Harrier game on an arcade machi machine. Shenmue 2 continued the story and changed little in gameplay, which was fine, nothing needed to be changed. This was released on Xbox in 2002, but didn't look as good as the Dreamcast. A lot of shadows were removed on the Xbox. Strange when you compare the specs of the Xbox to the Dreamcast. Years later, in 2018, Shenmue 1 and 2 made its way to Xbox One and PS4, and after years and years of rumour and speculation, Part 3 was officially announced with a release date of August 2019. Whether that's going to happen, who knows. So there you have it, that's my top 10 on the amazing, fantastic and sadly short-lived Dreamcast by Sega. Uh, a fantastic console, there's a few compilations out there as well, there's one on the Xbox, and uh, I think that was the one actually, there was one on the Xbox before games, which wasn't great, uh, but I recommend picking up a Dreamcast if you don't have one, the games are incredible. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. If you like that video and if you like what I do on the channel, please leave a like and please subscribe because it helps very much. Thank you.